Well, my name is Christy Gullickson, and I have been a hospice chaplain for the last 15 years with Avira, and then before that I was a hospital chaplain for Avira for seven years. What are the challenges of my job? Um, I would have to say that there is, if anybody's listening and has ever walked with someone through end of life, through a terminal illness of a loved one and their death, you know that it is exhausting and it takes every single bit of energy, every part of emotional energy and physical, spiritual, mental energy, and it is wearying, exhausting work. It's holy work. It's beautiful work. It's a privilege to be walking alongside our loved ones, or as in my case, as a hospice chaplain alongside my patients, but it does take energy. And um, I'm tired. I get very tired. And COVID uh, had its own set of challenges. We needed extra energy just to adjust to the changes every day. And then also we wore protective equipment. Wearing a mask was extra energy required to hear people and to have myself be heard. Uh, it was. It's just been a wearying time of needing energy just to just to survive. There are certain situations that take more energy when it's a young person, and we've had young people, young mothers. We've had uh, people in the prime of life. But you know, it's one thing when they're 90 years old. We still grieve and uh, um, and and mourn their loss. But when they're young people, and we've had a number of young people die and to grieve what with their families what might have they might have been in years to come and what they will be missing out on is it's it's very profound a very deep source of of weariness that comes and um, another part of of the challenges also has been the isolation isolation of of our patients who were not able to see their family members, some of them for eight months, and isolation of us as a team, not always being able to meet in person. We're a very close team here. We, we work very tightly together, and um, our, our chaplain department would meet weekly face-to-face and check in eventually after several months of being isolated and recognizing how much we needed each other. We needed each other's presence. So we started meeting face to face and just checking in and, and praying with each other and ascertaining how we could best serve our patients. And I remember one story um, of one of the residents that I had visited in a long-term care facility. And she'd been in her room for eight months because that was the policy of the long-term care facility. They did not eat together in the dining room. They, they had their meals in their room. They were not involved in any activities. And I was able to visit her as a chaplain. I, you know, I had my gown on and my gloves and my mask, but, and, but I was still a presence and I was a person. And I felt acutely the privilege that it was to be with her. And she shared with me how lonely she had been and how she was so tired of being in her room for eight months. And she, this was around Christmas time, and that was another thing. It was holidays, and families could not be there with their loved ones. And she said, and I have a recording, she said, of, of Silent Night. Would you like to hear it? And I said, of course. So she put this recording of Silent Night on, and it was sung absolutely beautifully with such tenderness and such um, feeling. And I could just see her face change as, as we were listening it together. Her, her, her face became radiant. And I felt the presence of God there in, in the music and in our being together. And despite the isolation, God still showed up. God showed up in many, many ways. And that was one of the joys of, of COVID is being surprised at where God showed up and, um, and needing each other. And I was very aware of my need for my own family and my need for community because I wasn't able to have it and how important that is to me and how dear my family and my community are to me. That is something I deeply appreciate about Avira is that we take care of each other and we recognize that we are fallible people who need each other.
we're not perfect. We have limits. We are mortal people. And certainly working in hospice shows me that my, mor my own mortality. And COVID was, has been such a challenge that we have really tried to be creative with supporting each other. And we have, um, well, not outside of the chaplains, we were, the chaplains were asked to reach out to the staff members throughout COVID by making phone calls and just checking in with them. How are you doing? What's, you know, what's happening? And being available. And also um, we gather every morning as a whole team. It's called Line Up. We, we check in with each other. We have a prayer for the day. And um, there is permission and there's freedom to be human. If someone's having a bad day, and we do have bad days, and we all get tired, it's okay to say, you know, I just, I just need a few minutes here, or I need a break, or I need somebody to listen to me. There's permission here to do that, and I so appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Because there's grief. The grief is palpable sometimes. It's so real, and we don't always have time to grieve when we work in hospice. And with COVID, it was so intense and so um, over and over getting hit with with difficult situations, there really sometimes was not room to breathe. And so to be very gentle with ourselves and gentle with each other was absolutely essential to, in surviving. Well, one thing I've learned, and this is partly, in, partly getting older um, and also going through COVID, is the importance of letting go and recognizing that there is only one God and it's not me. And I am not in charge of what others choose to do or the outcomes of, of COVID or who chooses to wear a mask or become vaccinated or what the outcome of the Ukraine will be. I, I'm not in charge of that. And I have to let go of what I cannot control, but I can do what is within my sphere. I can show up, I can show kindness, I can trust God, I can pray, I can be there, I can witness to the fact that God is love and the you know Lutherans love promises of God and and even though I'm not in charge of outcomes I know what God's promises promises are and they're true God is faithful God is love there's nothing that will ever separate us from God's love he says I will be with you I will strengthen you I will help you nothing you know I those things are so rooted in truth and that's what I've been hanging on to and I've also been invited, you use that word invited, and I so appreciate that. I've been invited to find sanctuary in God and in the midst of a chaotic world, and it has been chaos. Even before COVID, it was chaotic, but now it's been exacerbated, but to find sanctuary in God, who says, I don't call you to run around like a chicken with its head cut off. I don't call you to be pushing, pushing, pushing yourself. And a lot of times we had to do that in COVID, just had to go, go, go. But God says, I invite you to come and rest in me, rest in me. And that rest can take a lot of forms. It doesn't have to necessarily be not doing things, but it's almost a state of trust and letting go of what I can't do. And being called into those holy situations, Pastor Jeff, sometimes I don't know what to say. I just show up. I, I let go of every preconceived idea that I have to be right, I have to be perfect, I have to say the right thing, and I just trust that my being there is sufficient and I will have the words I need. My mother died right at the onset of COVID. I mean, her funeral was, I think, the last funeral First Lutheran did for a long time. And that was another example of having to let go. I had this idea of what I wanted for my mother's end of life. I wanted well, she was here at Doherty House, and I wanted her to have a beautiful, perfect death and have a, some weeks of just enjoying what we offer here at Doherty with music and art and pizza, maybe a pizza party with her kids and, and just to be basking in the love that we offer. And much of that did happen, but there's much that we're not in charge of when in a dying process. And my mother had dementia, and she had some paranoia, and... And a lot of those desires that I had for her, that she would have a smooth, peaceful end of life, didn't happen because I was not in charge. And I wanted to help her, you know, make her choices. But if she, she was tired and she wanted to rest much of the time. And so 
I had to let go of my um, aspirations for her and trust that she was, you know, she had the freedom to die in her own way. And she did die in a beautiful death. A couple of my family members were there and a music therapist was there singing to her and uh, she'd been able to have communion. It was, it was really a beautiful death, but it was not, but I had to let go of a lot of things. And um, another part of her death and her being actually here at Doherty House, and this is one of the joys I think that I discovered was the, the communal aspect of, of working together with my colleagues. I have the best colleagues on the planet and they cared for my mother, they cared for me and they continue to care for me. And we, we need each other. And in the midst of isolation and um, masking and um, tiredness and some of the um, other equipment that we wear, there is an, um, there's a bond there that we have that is beautiful. And so I am so grateful, so, so grateful to be able to work with the people I work with. They are a gift to me. Again, I have learned to be gentle with myself and to be gentle with others in this time of COVID. Uh, everybody's tired. And we're, there is, a, I, I guess I'm also aware we brothers and sisters in Christ and even those who are not part of the faith, we're still brothers and sisters of, of being created by a loving creator. And to be gentle with each other, to give each other space, to be who they are, to honor what I can honor in them and not retaliate in any way, shape or form with anger or trying to change people. Um, and COVID is, I don't know that it's made us kinder. I, I don't, I haven't always seen that, but I, I am invited to be kind. There's one thing I'm learning as I get older, it's to let go and to be kind. Um, be gentle with myself first and then with others. So.